In this screencast, I'm going to go over how we can compute confidence intervals in multiple linear regression. There are three types of confidence intervals that we are usually interested in. Confidence intervals on regression coefficients. Uh, regression coefficients are also known as least squares estimators. Excel's regression tool will output these confidence intervals. Secondly, confidence intervals on the mean response. And finally, prediction intervals on a future observation. The second two, Excel's regression tool does not output. So just as a reminder, we can compute the standard error of a least square estimator or a regression coefficient as the square root of our standard error squared times the jth diagonal element of this C matrix. The C matrix is just the inverse of X transpose times X. And so that's how we can obtain the standard error of an estimator. Excel's regression tool outputs the standard error of the coefficients, so you can also get those standard errors from the regression output. To compute confidence intervals on the model parameters, we can use this equation. Our confidence interval is centered around the least squares estimate, beta hat j. Again, we get that standard error from the diagonal element of our covariance matrix. So this is how we can compute the confidence interval for model parameters. We can use confidence intervals, by the way, for hypothesis testing. If the confidence interval contains zero, then we cannot rule out the null hypothesis and it cannot be rejected. Otherwise, if our confidence interval does not include zero, then this supports our alternate hypothesis. Another type of confidence interval is a confidence interval on the mean response. And that is at a particular x value, we denote this as x naught. And this is a vector, remember, because our vector x actually has a bunch of inputs. For example, it might have x1, x2, x3, and x4. At that particular combination of inputs, the confidence interval on the mean response basically gives us an idea of where that mean might lie, a 95% confidence interval. We have this pretty complex formula here. It's centered about the mean response. So we can evaluate that. We can evaluate the model at point zero. That's just x naught inverse times beta hat. You see we have a lot of matrix multiplication going on in this formula. And so it's best to use computing tools like Excel or MATLAB or something else. And I'll show you an example of how we can do this in Excel in a moment. The interval width changes with x naught. It's minimum at x naught equals the average. And again, remember that these are vectors we're talking about. The interval appears as a pair of expanding envelope curves around the regression line. We can also put together a prediction interval on a future observation. That future observation is y naught. It's centered about y naught hat. What I'm showing here is a half interval. Just to save some space, it's very similar to the confidence interval on the mean response. The only Modification here is we have a one inside these parentheses, which is due to the uncertainty of the new measurement. And we can calculate y naught hat as the transpose of x naught multiplied by beta hat. This evaluates the model at point zero. So I've got this in a file called satisfaction data, uh, confidence and prediction intervals. It takes quite a while to work through this. So I've already worked through it for you and I would encourage you to open this up and see what I've done. Uh, because it requires a lot of matrix math and functions in Excel. So here we have our confidence interval on the slope and intercept. In some previous screencasts, I've showed you how you can calculate coefficients and standard error. We can compute our lower 95 and upper 95. It doesn't have to be 95. We could have a different value of alpha, but that's what I've done here using this formula. If I click in here, you see that we are using our coefficients. So that's our beta j hat. We're using our t alpha divided by two with n minus p degrees of freedom. And we're using our corresponding standard errors of those coefficients. So that's how we can compute the lower and upper confidence intervals on the parameters. It's important to take a look at the confidence intervals to see if they include zero. We do see that this contains zero. So surge med, that parameter, that's a categorical regressor, that does contain zero, as does anxiety. In a previous screencast, I showed you that the p-values for those two parameters, that would be x3 and x4, are pretty high, 0.89 and 0.24. And we get the same conclusion when we look at confidence intervals because those two both contain zero. 
So we conclude that adding those terms in our model is not necessary. It actually doesn't help the model, and so we may as well just leave them out. So our model then would just be beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2, and we would ignore those third and fourth terms in that model. To compute a confidence interval on the mean response, we have this big old mess of an equation. We have our input vector. We have to evaluate this at a particular combination of our inputs. I have an x0 here. Remember, we have to include an intercept term, and the coefficient of the intercept is just 1. And I'm just evaluating this at 45 for x1, 35 for x2, 0 for that categorical regressor for x3, and 2 for our anxiety. I've named this x0. I've just used our standard error that the regression outputs. We can evaluate the average at y by just taking the transpose of x0 and multiplying it by beta hat. So that's just this equation right here. Then we can use that in this confidence interval equation, and this is where it gets a little bit messy. I'm using mmult a couple of times. I'm using transpose. Uh, you can pause this and look at this, or you can download the file to see how I've done this. But it takes a while again to put this together, so just take your time. But that's our lower 95% confidence interval, and we can do something similar by just adding that half interval for the upper 95% confidence interval on the mean response. Now the prediction interval is very similar to what I just went over. The only difference is now we have a 1 in here. So same thing here. If we want to predict, given a future observation, we have our combination of inputs. Again, I have my intercept coefficient of 1. We can compute our y naught hat. So that would be the prediction by taking the transpose of x naught f, I call it here, uh, multiplying by beta. So that would be 75.7. And then we can use this formula here, again, with a bunch of messy functions in here. You can look at that later on. And we get our lower and upper 95% prediction intervals. And again, it doesn't have to be 95. We could do 98, 99, 90, and so on. The nice thing about Excel is you can just automatically change these. So maybe we had somebody who's 60 years old. Maybe they had uh, a more severe illness. Maybe they were a medical patient. Maybe they have a lot of anxiety. And so then we could predict what the satisfaction of that patient would be. So hopefully you learned in this screencast how to put together confidence intervals and prediction intervals for multiple linear regression.